Knobbox Dance presents So dance, you know, like so many of us in the performing arts, we're so passionate about what we do. And it's it's this one thing that we've always known and loved, right? So, you know, I there were times when I thought that dance and the arts wouldn't be my career, but I kept gravitating back to that. And then when I got into it in a professional sense, there were all of these check boxes that I felt had to be marked off in order to be a quote unquote successful dance education program. But in that process, I realized I was losing my vision, um, my legacy, like everything that I had dreamed about in my childhood of the potential and the possibility um, for dance education in the world right now. So that's what the book is really about is just kind of that hard position of saying, maybe this could be better. And maybe, you know, we are the people that could do that. Um, whether, you know, we weren't trying to be like game changers. It was very much just like, I felt like I needed to fix what I was doing. And then when I started telling people about it, they were like, oh my gosh, I wish that I could do that. Um, but there's so much fear and uncertainty, which is ironic now that we kind of live in fear and uncertainty all of the time right now in 2020. Um, but I was just like, what if we wrapped it up and just put it out there? A book is a very passive tool um, that you can take the information, apply it, use it, do what you want with it. And maybe it will have the same positive effects on someone else that it had for us. So, you know, when we were really involved in this competitive sphere, there's kind of this whole competitive dance market on Instagram, right? Because the companies right. use the students to like sell their products, to showcase their events. Um, and that is really when we had students coming in and saying, oh, this, I need to do this turn series, or I need to do this acrobatic skill. And it's like, one, there's danger in that because you don't know that person's foundation or their training schedule. Like you can't just see one person doing something. Like I can't see Michael Phelps swimming in a pool and even <laughs> begin to think that that's like a stroke that I'm going to be able to begin to do. Right. So there's, there can be this disconnect because it can be 12 year olds looking at 12 year olds. Right. And exactly. they're in this very impressionable age in their lives. So we talk a lot about how, you know, social media is curated. Um, this is always the best of the best. Like people aren't always going to post videos where they're falling out of their turns or where they're crying in the studio after 10 hours of working on something. Um, that it doesn't just happen overnight, that it requires like a lot of work. So that's the first thing. And then two, um, we're constantly talking about how this, you know, comparative notion, like there's so much comparison. And I even went through a phase where I was like, I am not logging on to think positive thoughts. So I really shouldn't be logging on. Um, and, you know, it's just like, is it inspiring you or is it making you resentful about who you are and what you're doing? So that's like another really good question and exercise to pass along. We're really seeing the conversation kind of in the 11, the 11 and up. Um, it's where we really have to, that's kind of like the target market. Right. But, you know, they will also, they'll discover, you know, new dance snippets, like from classic movies, um, or, you know, they'll find a quote that is really inspiring. And so we also try to positively reward when they're sharing that type of information and to say, you know, oh, that's really good. You know, you were using your, your media in a really good um, educational way when you discovered that. So, you know, leadership is one of those things where I feel like if you're good, you're always learning and you, you never like wake up and say, oh man, I'm really nailing it today. Um, it's, it's kind of this roller coaster and that's the beauty of it. And I think the good thing is that you're always, you know, the best piece of advice that I can give is to always keep moving, like never be okay with standing still, like constantly ask yourself what's working, what's not, where are the gaps? Um, what are the gut feelings? You know, what do we need to shift and then do it? Because a lot of times I think we have those feelings and, you know, and this was kind of one of my downfalls early in the studio and with my leadership 
of having those feelings, but maybe not acting on them because there's fear of judgment or criticism or what will other people think, but, you know, surround yourself, build a, build a culture and, and make the moves and don't necessarily worry about everything else that's going on in the space or what, you know, the person down the street is doing. And around April or May of last year, I was like, I am becoming so narrow sided because we were, we were, it was just pivot after pivot, or we had to redo this, redo that. Um, and it was so much rework, which, you know, for a type A person is incredibly frustrating <laughs> <laughs> to have to rework thing after thing. Yep. Um, so I, I actually, I got a leadership coach because I was like, you have to stay on track with your vision. Um, and the great thing about having, you know, and it, whoever it is, maybe it's a mentor or a leadership coach or a therapist or a combination thereof. But when you're a leader, you are at the top and, you know, they always say it's very lonely at the top or sometimes there aren't other, you don't, you know, you have your people that you're cheering on and that you want to keep the morale up, but you also have to look out for you. So however you need to assemble a team to, to keep you on track, to keep you supported, to keep you healthy. I do think that's really, really important because this is mentally exhausting. Crisis leadership is really tiring and, you know, it's been going on for a really long time. The number one thing, and I, and I didn't do this enough early in my career is listen, like a lot of our decisions and changes have come from listening and having the confidence to say, this is who we are. Um, like we, you know, it's very small and simple things like, um, three years ago, I think it was three or four years ago, we had some dance parents, you know, bring some really meaningful conversation to us about a variety of topics. The first one, we had a recital that was themed around children's books. And a lot of those books we had pulled off of the like Caldecott and Newberry award-winning list. So things like Where the Wild Things Are, Velveteen Rabbit, Junie B. Jones, those type things. And I had a mom email and she said, I have to ask why are there... I, there might have been one or two, but why are there not more books on this list that have black female protagonists? And I was like, oh my gosh, that's a really great question. And I started like digging into it. And the really, you know, frustrating fact is that they weren't on those lists. Um, and they really only started um, being written recently. Um, and I was just like, thank you so much for bringing that to my attention. Like, this is something that we need to work on. Um, you know, same thing about the skin tone tights. You know, we just, we stopped. We just stopped doing them like several years ago because I was like, if this is going to make someone feel inferior, why? Why? Like, it's just unnecessary. Right. Um, so I think these conversations, even when they're hard, and even when we were leaving the competitive dance industry, um, the hard conversations are often where you can find the greatest growth and it doesn't just like happen overnight either. Like I think we have to look at ourselves as constantly a work in progress. So whether that's your, the competitive dance industry or concert performance or a dance studio, dance education, how can we keep evolving in a way that is going to be inclusive and progressive and encouraging. And just because it's the way that it has always been done doesn't mean that that's right or the best, the best way. Like things can change and that's okay. Thanks for taking your time to tune into Dance Behind the Screen, a bi-monthly interview series where we go behind the screen to question process, product, and social media. Be sure to follow us on social media at KNOW Box Dance. See you next time and don't forget to say no to the box. <laughs>